Okay, the next talk is uh, by Matthias over there, and he'll be talking about internet, internet censorship, censorship in the Catalan referendum. A warm welcome to World Matthias. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, welcome to my talk. Uh, first of all, I want to give a short disclaimer, so I'm not a security specialist. And so most of the information you can find here, or nearly all the information, is, uh, from public uh, is publicly available. And I wasn't involved in any illegal activity, so only second-hand information, sorry. Okay, uh, what I will talk about? Uh, I, will talk, uh, about I will give you a short background, or a political background. Then I will talk a lot about how the filtering of the ISPs uh, did work. Then there is a, was a homepage that's called Where to Vote homepage, which had a different, uh, uh, a different way to store data. And I will talk about the day of the referendum, and ho hopefully we will have some time for Q&A. Okay, so here on the right-hand side you can see the Spanish state, and uh, the red part is uh, Catalonia, which is well-known uh, city Barcelona. So Catalonia has its own language and culture, it's one of the rich, richest regions in, the, in Spain, with 20% of the GDP. And it has a long history of, uh, of struggle to get more autonomy. This is uh, especially in 2010, the uh, autonomy got uh, cut down by the Spanish government. And uh, so the voices uh, came up that uh, asked for independence. So the Catalan government decided to have a referendum and first asked 16 times the Spanish uh, government to agree on a referendum, and the Spanish government uh, didn't want to. And so the Catalan parla parliament in June decided in majority to hold a referendum on 1st of October, which later was uh, called inconstitutional by the Spanish Supreme Court. Okay, so ob obviously in, in this talk, we will talk uh, I will talk uh, on a, about the internet censorship, and the, be, and the focus will be on this. But there has been also other things uh, happening uh, the weeks before the referendum that I want to talk about, or well, the weeks before and then in the weeks after. So, for example, there was pro-referendum material was confiscated by the police. We had over 800 injured uh, people by the police, and on the day of the referendum, when the police tried to shut down p uh, polling stations, one man lost his eye by a police rubber bullet, uh, interesting here is that uh, Catalan police uh, forces are not allowed to use rubber bullet against uh, protesters, but Spanish police officers are allowed to do so in Catalonia. So uh, right now there are four persons in prison without bail, including the, the legitimate vice president and two leaders of uh, political organizations. And the president or the leg legitimate president of Catalonia and four ministers are in Brussels in exile. So if you want to, uh, to see more about the uh, repre police repression, you can have a look on this link, where there are a lot of videos about the day of the referendum. So there's a famous uh, phrase in Spain that says, Spain is different. And uh, in Catalonia, 70% of the population uh, um, wanted to, do, to have a referendum on 1st of October. And the answer of the, of the Spanish state was this. So you can see uh, peacefully uh, pro protesters sitting on the street trying to block the police from shutting down a polling station and police beating them up. Uh, in comparison, for example, you have the Scottish referendum in 2014, where, which was agreed between the, Catalan, uh, sorry, between the UK government and the Scottish government. And, uh, well, uh, it seems that in Spain, political problems are treated differently. Okay, so that's enough about politics, and let's get more technical. Um, uh, I took this uh, picture from e EFF, so it shows you how internet censorship works. So the idea is that you post your speech here, which is normally via, via web host, and your audience has to pass all this chain to actually see your speech. And in each part, like ISP, DNS, CDN, and so on, 
uh, it can break the chain. On the other hand, we have the platforms like Twitter, Facebook, you name it, or payment systems, which can also be censored. So, a uh, small spoiler. Uh, I marked all the places where censorship did happen in the Catalan referendum, so in the web host. Or we start, we start uh, down here, ISP, DNS, upstream. Upstream means, uh, in this case, that a smaller ISP providers, which use uh, in infrastructure of bigger ones, uh, can, uh, can also be affected of uh, censorship if the bigger ones start to censor on the web host and on the platform. So we will see now how this uh, was done. So on the right hand side, you see the homepage of the referendum, which informed about the referendum on 1st of October. And it was hosted in a small web host provider uh, outside Barcelona in a small, in a small town called Sidimon. And on 13th of September, police entered with a uh, court order the web host provider and, uh, and shut down the web page. Then afterwards there appeared uh, two mirrors, first one mirror ref1oct.cat and afterwards ref1oct.eu.cat stands for Catalonia and not for the pet, right? So, uh, well, on the next day, two more uh, official homepage got sized and on 16 on September, on a judge order, the ISP start to block, to block homepages, right? And the next big event was the 20th of September, which was like the big attack from the Spanish state against the referendum. So they took over the control of the Catalan treasury, so the autonomous region of Catalonia wasn't able to spend any money. They um, announced that they will bring 10,000 police officers to Catalonia to stop the referendum, and that as they don't have facilities for all of them, some will sleep in, in ships in Catalan ports. And uh, there were a total of 14 people arrested by federal police, uh, um, several high-ranking officials of the Catalan government and civil servants, and uh, especially some members of the Center of Telecommunication, Telecommunication and Technology, which is the technology center of the Catalan government. So with, with this, it seems uh, that uh, most of the technology infrastructure for the referen referendum got dismantled, and uh, if you read this web link down here, which is unfortunately only in Catalan, you can uh, see that uh, a hacktivist group took over the task of uh, setting up the infrastructure, and they did it uh, directly from the underground. So they used Tor, Signal, anonymous SIM cards, Bitcoins, and, uh, because, and later on it, was, uh, it got clear that uh, actually the police was intervening the telephones of the politicians, of the Catalan politicians, to find out where, uh, which people to arrest and which uh, facilities to, uh, to search on the 20th of September. Okay, apart from that, there was also the technical director of Fundacio.cat arrested. So what is Fundacio.cat? Fundacio.cat is a private foundation and is the top-level domain operator of the .cat domain. So they got a, a, court, a court order on the 15th of September to shut down ref1oct.cat, and in total they got, uh, they got three court orders with uh, every time a larger list of domains. Um, the court order also included that they should resolve the, uh, the mentioned .cat domains to a police server, and if you know how DNS works, then you know that the top-level domain uh, name, name server only, link, uh, only pinpoints you to an authoritative domain server. So it seems like the police didn't really understand how DNS works. Um, but what is a more severe uh, part on this, uh, on, on this is the fact that the court order also included that the top-level domain operator um, has to block all domains that may contain any kind of information about the referendum and that they should actually actively um, monitor all the domains. So that places the burden of blocking domains to the registry operator, and uh, the question is if this is legal at all, because there's no court, court order, it's just block them all. Okay, so on the, on the 17th of September, they inform uh, Fundacio.cat informed ICANN about the warrant, and on the 20th, uh, the technical director get arrested. So he was retained under custody for two and a half days, with the accusation right now up, um, up to date is misappropriation of public funds, perversion of justice, and disobedience, uh, which is a bit strange because uh, 
is a private foundation, so I don't know how to apply misappropriation of public, fund, or public funds, but I'm not a lawyer, neither. So the, the, the reasons are, that's the interesting part as well, the reasons are quite unclear, so there is no, no proofs, or proofs, proofs or evidences uh, were provided up to now, and the director actually is awaiting the trial to see what the prosecutor actually uh, puts on the table to see what they actually, uh, on what these accusations are based. Okay, um, the, as, an, as an answer to this, uh, a massive amount of mirrors uh, appear in the next days. The exact number is difficult to say, but it, uh, it's over 100 for sure. So some, one mirror was also done in the Tor network. And you had some funny names like Guardia Civil Sexy, where Guardia Civil is uh, one of the is a civil guard, which is a federal police corps that was um, intervening in the in the Catalan referendum. And Piolin dot cat, uh, Piolin is is, uh, is Catalan and stands for Tweety. You know this uh, small chicken cartoon, uh, uh, the yellow one. So why is this? Why would you name a domain name like this? Well, because one of the boats where the police officer slept was this one. <laughs> so it was really a joke in, in social media. On 22nd of, the, of September, the police raids a house near Valencia, uh, accused as a man, Dan, Daniel Morale, Morales, uh, that he's uh, head of a group organ that organizes mirrors of the referendum websites. Uh, just mentioned that Valencia is outside of Catalonia and uh, that he did this with this GitHub uh, repository. And the worrisome thing here is that the search warrant included, literally, the, to change password and security questions for GitHub, Facebook, Twitter, mail, etc. Uh, of him. So when then the police uh, actually entered his house, he had the computer turned on, so he, they were able to take over sessions in the browser in concrete uh, uh, Google account and the GitHub account. Uh, 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 happily, he uh, later asked, uh, was talking to lawyers and says, says, said that it was Ill totally illegal, so he was able to rec recover them after a few days by notifying Google and GitHub that his uh, identity got robbed. He's accused of disobedience, which is six months to four years of prison, and is awaiting trial as well. And uh, there are more than 15 people. Uh, uh, there are more than 15 people were cited to declare, but I have no information about uh, how this, if they, uh, what they accused of, uh, etc. Okay, let's uh, have a look on the sensor methods. So uh, overall, the number is circulating between 25 websites, which says the Open Observatory Network of Interference, interference from the Tora um, project to up to 140 blocked websites. Most of the sites blocked or censored were mirrors of the official websites, but also political organizations which uh, uh, are pro-independence, pro or the Yes campaign websites from the political parties that run a campaign for the referendum to vote yes. And some other, uh, um, uh, um, like in Paparem, I, I, I won't explain, but uh, there were some smaller uh, websites which uh, uh, which was created from the social movements of Catalonia to support the referendum. So what we've seen up to now, uh, from the center methods, we've seen web hosts got sized, we've seen the redirection of the .cat domains to a police landing page by the TL TLD name server or by the TLD registrar, re uh, registry operator, and uh, uh, apart from that, uh, the ISPs as well um, did uh, sensor so they used DNS tempering and HTTP blocking, and the interesting thing is that different ISPs use different methods. So in, in concrete, DNS tempering was used by France Telecom Spain, Vodafone, and Neuscatel, and the more sophisticated deep package inspection was used by Telefonica. Telefonica is one of the biggest uh, ISPs in Spain, or the biggest. And uh, as I already said, uh, smaller ISPs which, connected, which were connected or which are connected to the larger were also affected. And the other interesting part here is that some small independent ISPs were not affected, so it's not clear if um, the police uh, forget to send them a court warrant, or if the police said uh, with 90% of the internet users 
not being able to see all these mirrors, we are fine. This is the home page, uh, the police landing page I already talked about. When you, try, when you enter a URL of a censored website, it shows a um, symbol of the civil guard and well, some information. Okay, uh, let's talk about DNS tempering. In the case of DNS tempering, what the, the ISPs did, they just uh, uh, resolved, uh, the, the, uh, they resolved the host name in their, in their DNS servers to the police landing page. So it was really easy or quite easy to circumvent this. You just change the DNS resolver address in your local machine, and uh, this works. In case of Vodafone, if you had an original Vodafone router, you also had to call them on the help desk and uh, ask them to disable the DNS proxy, which actually they did. Or alternatively, you use a VPN. Uh, the depackage impact, uh, inspection was done on the HTTP layer. So what they did say, uh, matched uh, the uh, host name of a HTTP GET request uh, on, a, on some specific IP addresses. And there was a regular expression used to do this. I'm really bad in regular expressions. Here's the example for ref one octeu So if you put anything in front of wwwref one octeu when you do the HTTP GET request, then the, uh, then the filter hit. But if you put like info.ref1 octeu then you actually uh, the filter didn't hit. Um, the, this website used uh, Cloudflare CDN, Cloud CDN, and there were two, web, two IP addresses uh, which um, were resolved by the DNS system. Um, so the uh, IPs uh, used for this blocking were these two IPs, and if you used a different IP from Cloudflare, then you could actually see the home page. In the case of uh, HTTPS, the HTTP traffic is encrypted, so you can't use the HTTP GET um, uh, hostname to filter. So what you do, uh, what, what they did here is um, the TLS um, protocol, uh, the host in the TLS protocol has to know which, uh, which uh, domain you actually want to start uh, uh, the encryption to provide you a specific, so the correct uh, certificate. So therefore, the, in the TLS uh, hello message, uh, there's a field that's the server name indication, which is uh, transmitted in clear text, which uh, passes through this, uh, which gives a hint on the host you want uh, the certi certificate for. And that is used by all state-of-the-art browsers. So you can see this here when the client sends a TLS hello message, you have the uh, SNI domain name here, and then there is a the package inspection here which checks, and if it's allowed, then it will forward, and you have a normal connection, and if not, it will reset, reset the connection. Um, when the connection gets reset, uh, which is HTTPS or HTTP, you got the CIS um, homepage. So you can see here the HTML body, there's some JavaScript snippet. And you can see here a switch, and, uh, and here the uh, homepage will actually be replaced by the police landing page, the, the one we saw beforehand. Uh, you can also see that there are other cases in the switch, and this, for example, is for illegal gambling, which, is, uh, which will load a, different, uh, a, web, a web page from a different IP. And so it looked like that uh, this infrastructure wasn't built up for the referendum, but it was already there used by Telefonica for illegal gambling homepages. And uh, if, you look on the, so, well, if you look on this, which is actually the case that hit uh, on the referendum homepages, uh, you can see that it's most probably they in, uh, added the, uh, domains, uh, the domain names to the, phishing, to the list of phishing uh, homepages and uh, blocked them this way. Okay, um, uh, with some tests, uh, you could see that the deep package inspection holds the state for 10 seconds because it can't hold the state forever. Um, and because it has only a, 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 a finite amount of memory. So what you could do, you could, for example, here with Netcat, you connect, you do an HTTP connection to port 80. So you have an HTTP connection built up and then you wait 11 seconds before you send the HTTP GET request with the host name, and then uh, the filter doesn't apply. 
So, <laughs> so conclusions. If uh, the homepage uses Cloudflare, you can just use a different Cloudflare IP to resolve the domain, and then you should be fine. Or you could delay the HTTP GET for 11 seconds or use a VPN. So the conclusions overall about uh, censorship in this case, uh, technically it was uh, easy to circumvent um, uh, as long as you don't have to educate 5.3 million voters, right? I mean, if you, uh, if you into tech, you maybe can change your your, your DNS server, uh, if you ask maybe your parents, maybe they're not, they don't know how to do this. And uh, here you can see on the right hand side a Twitter from the president of Catalonia, which uh, explains how to use uh, online proxies to actually uh, circumvent, uh, um, circumvent the censorship. Uh, as far as I know, uh, the and no ISP communicated to the users that they will start to block content. And uh, I think the most interesting co conclusion is uh, choose your ISP wisely, you might get around censorship. Apart that you see some are more motivated to censor than others. Okay, uh, now we will talk about uh, the where to vote website. So normally if you, go, uh, 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 if you are called to an election, you get a letter which uh, tells you on which polling station and polling place you have to go on the day of the election. This was not po possible because Spanish Post Service denied to send this information. So the Catalan um, government decided to build a homepage um, where, uh, where you could query this information. So you had, uh, as already said, census of 5.3 million voters and uh, over 1,000 polling stations, which you can see here in this map. And it was foreseen that the official homepage will be blocked, and so uh, the website must be easily clonable. And uh, normally you build a web website like this with a, a database backend uh, where you, query, where, where you um, query and then send back the information to the client, so this was not possible here, and I will explain in a minute how they did it. So this homepage was uh, published on the 21st of September and got blocked the next day, so the assumption was correct. <laughs> uh, Telegram and Twitter, uh, t Twitter bots were also published, where you could just send your, info uh, send your information and then they told you which polling station you had to go, and also an Android app in the Google Play Store. And this app uh, was pulled out on the 29th of September. So it, at least it was up for some more days. Uh, okay, many clones of this homepage appeared. And the web got also published in the interplanetary file system. For everybody who does not know what the interplanetary file system is, it is a really cool project, project I think. It's a peer-to-peer -peer network. And uh, you can imagine that this is... A, like a BitTorrent magnet link, where you can find the homepage, and any client in the network who has a homepage, uh, you can access it, and you have here a gateway, which actually allows you to see the data in your browser. So what did Telefonica? They wanted to block this homepage, so they just blocked the whole gateway. That means it not uh, does not only block the uh, homepage of the referendum, but any other data that uh, any anybody wanted to see through this gateway. Unfortunately, um, there were different uh, gateways, uh, and there exist different gateways for IPFS, and it was, so it was still possible to see the content. And if you use the command line tool, you could uh, easily copy the content to your, uh, or to your computer. Okay, so the, the web page, uh, ab about where to vote, looked like this, so you had to put in some a uh, personal ID, which is called DNI, then the date of birth and your postcode, and then you send the information. And uh, as I already said, uh, there, it's not possible to have a backend uh, as an uh, as a SQL database because um, because uh, if you clone it, this is confidential uh, information. You would have to dump the database, and you would have to provide an IPFS, for example, the database to everybody, and you don't want that because you don't want everybody to know uh, the IDs and where the people have to go to vote. So what did they did? What did they do? They took uh, this is the ID of uh, 
the ID of the person, which is eight uh, numbers and a character. The character is a checksum, the date of birth and the postcode. And you can concatenate the uh, leaving alone uh, the f first three numbers. So you take all these, what is underlined, uh, this as a string, and then you hash it 1714 times, and you put it in a variable, let's call it key here, and then you hash it once more and you put it in search. And then uh, the hash from search, you take the first four values, and this will give you the file of the database which is encrypted on the web server itself, which you download. This is all done. This, all this procedure is done in JavaScript in your client, in your browser, right? So you download this file. The file uh, is a key value store. It has around 70 lines. And then you take the remaining 60 values of the hash and go line by line to find, to find, the, to find the values uh, of the key value store. And this is actually not random data, but encrypted data. And this data you can encrypt with the key here using AES 256 CBC, and then you get the polling station. This is more or less clear how this works. <laughs> so the question is here, okay, you have all these, uh, all these um, data encrypted on the web server. Is this secure? Well, uh, first of all, you can do brute force because it's just a hash, yeah? You can just start uh, trying and, and hash and fi uh, to find it out. And uh, as you have the postcodes and the birth dates, you can group this in divide and conquer. And uh, as the letter here is a checksum, you, can, you can't uh, recalculate the correct ID, but you can recalculate 45 IDs. So maybe you can then say some IDs look really strange. I've never seen an, seen an ID like this. I can ignore them. And then you have a reduced number of IDs that you can, by brute force, uh, get for one postcode and one de birth date. So that you know one of these, I don't know, maybe 15 is correct. So the question is, uh, how well is this data? There was a big uh, discussion in the media about this, um, especially the media against the referendum said that all the, all, uh, all the census of 5.3 million people were leaked. So first of all, you don't get the, the correct ID. You just get a, a, a reduced number of IDs, and the, and the IDs are public data in, this, uh, in the sense that if you want to open a bank account, you have to tell your ID. Uh, if you want to get a library card, you will uh, have to tell your ID, or if you, uh, I don't know, if you want to uh, sign up in a gym because you think you, you're not fit enough, uh, then you have also to uh, tell your ID. So the ID passes through a lot of hands, and it's not a t top secret data, like for, account, for example, the secu uh, social security number. So I think this is an interesting way of uh, storing data, a massive data in an easy-to-clonable website. In, I'm not sure about if, it's not, uh, if it could have been done better. So if you have any ideas about this, then uh, just write a blog post or Twitter about it or whatever and spread the word. Okay, so 30th of September, one day before the referendum actually happened, the federal police took over the CTTI, the Center of Telecommunications and Technology. Uh, this was because uh, more, nearly all the polling stations of this, of this day were, uh, uh, were uh, entities of the Catalan government, especially schools and medical stations. And their internet, uh, internet connection is all through CTTI. So they all have a connection to CTTI, and from there they go to the internet. And so probably they did this to start to monitor the IPs to see what traffic actually will, be, uh, will happen on, this, uh, on the polling stations. Okay, uh, day of the referendum. I just want to give you a small uh, impression about how the, how the uh, situation was on the day of the referendum. So you, it was clear that the federal police will come and will close down, uh, will try to close down polling stations by force. So there were people that were already sleeping from the day before, occupying the polling stations to hinder the police to, uh, to, 
stops the police from closing them down. And in the, early in the morning, around five o'clock, hundreds and thousands of people gathered in front of polling stations and stayed there the whole day, trying so to block, like with their bodies, the police from entering. And for example, the ballots and the ballot boxes, the which the police was, was searching for months, uh, magically arrived in the early in the early hour, hours of this day on the polling stations. Uh, so at eight o'clock uh, this morning, there was a global census uh, announced by the Catalan government that meant that you don't need to go to a specific polling station to vote, but you could go to any polling station. And this was done because it was foreseen that the police will close down polling stations by force. And actually, for example, in Barcelona, one of the first polling stations they closed down by force was the biggest one of Barcelona. So if you won't... Uh, if you don't have a global census, then everybody that, had a, uh, that need to go to this um, polling station won't be able to vote. And this way it was possible. So um, the homepage of the global census, which was a centralized database where you, um, where you register the IDs of the persons that had already voted so to assure that nobody votes twice or more, uh, more than once, it was really simple. So this is, uh, I, I haven't found a better picture because it's not uh, online anymore, obviously. Um, it looked like this. So you had a polling station and the, a polling station ID, which is this one, and then you had a polling station password. And uh, those uh, responsible of the polling station had to enter this to actually register on the central system the polling station, and then you could uh, enter IDs here to, um, to, to mark people as that they have voted. And then if you, if you put the buttons and when there was green, then the, people, the person was allowed to put the ballot in the ballot box. And if it was red, then you said, hey, you already voted, you're not allowed to vote again. Um, so it's, uh, it seems that the, this password here was also used for authentication and encryption of the data because uh, the whole system had no uh, TLS certificate. We will see why. Um, and there was, of, of course, a tight time frame of uptime for this uh, solution because the referendum was from 9 to 8 p.m. And you can't just say, well, we need four hours to fix this and then we are up again. So, um, internet connection in the polling stations, which runs through CTTI, what I said beforehand. It's not totally clear what happened, because it, there are so many different information from different people in different polling stations. So, some got cut off from the net totally, some got cut off only part of the net. For example, EduRoam Wi-Fi didn't work, but uh, cable network did work. In some, uh, you, weren't, you could not access um, using the Tor client, and uh, some reported that also IP, block, uh, IP addresses got directly blocked. Um, some, pol some polling station had alternative access to the net, but that was a mi mi minority. And so what the, in many polling stations people did, they used their cell phones, or they uh, used 4G access points, or the neighbors opened their Wi-Fi so that people could access and so register the voters. And it was uh, seen that uh, different IPs were blocked by different ISPs. Um, okay, so the, the page that was announced by, uh, in the morning was uh, the domain registered misses, which used uh, Cloudflare they like the other pages. And uh, it was blocked within minutes. And so, so it wasn't even possible to open the, the polling stations in time at 9 o'clock because uh, when they wanted to, uh, to connect, uh, to register all the polling places, it didn't work. So, and from this point on, uh, there were only, only uh, IP addresses were used directly, which were reverse proxies uh, for a central server that were somewhere on the internet. Um, and in the first hours, these reverse pro proxies were attacked through DDoS attacks all the time, and there were severe connection problems because uh, they got down quickly. And so if, you, if uh, your uh, reverse proxy didn't work, then you had to call a hotline, 
and say, hey, I'm using this IP address and it doesn't work. And then it says, OK, you have to use uh, another one, use this one. And uh, you can imagine that this is a total chaos because the uh, responsible of the polling station can be uh, an old man which has never used a computer and uh, you have to uh, tell him what is an IP address and where to put this. So there was a, a, a total chaos. Um, well, not, a, not chaos, but it was complicated, right? And uh, there was also instant messaging between people in different polling stations which interchanged information like, hey, I'm using this IP or I tried this. Uh, when I changed the DNS server, then I could uh, get access. So there was a lot of uh, communication. And it was seen that uh, every time a new IP address was announced through the hotline and the polling station started to use them, a DDoS attack was in place right away. So this is why this is prob possible that the police uh, check, the content, check the network connection of the polling stations or filter the network of the polling stations to find out which IPs to block. Uh, okay, so whenever you needed a new, a new reverse pro proxy, um, you needed to re-register uh, your polling place. So you had to call the hotline and say, hey, I'm, I'm, I'm polling place with ID X, I want to, uh, I, I, need a new, I, need, I need a new password. And they provided you a new password and then you could re-register. So what happened? Uh, someone was really emotional about the referendum and uh, historical day and posted a photo of the letter the, uh, the responsible, responsible of the polling place uh, got on Twitter where there was the, uh, the ID of his polling place and the number of the hotline. So someone, uh, <laughs> someone took the hotline, called, said, he is, uh, said that he is responsible of this polling place, got a, new, got a new password and was able to introduce some, uh, some IDs of, from people he found on the internet, which doesn't mean that he was able to actually vote. He was just able to um, mark people as voted, that they have voted, even they haven't. So if they would have come later to vote, so that, that won't be possible for them. Um, so the problem here was, of course, that there was no secure communication channel between the, uh, the polling place responsible and the hotline. So there was no way for the hotline to actually knew if the person that called was the responsible of a polling place or if it was someone who robbed the number. Okay, so as I said, there was a distributed in, uh, denial of service attack against the whole system, and that was organized through a forum that's called Foro Coaches, which is a forum about cars, where car lovers uh, uh, talk about a lot of things, and uh, they say not only about cars, but about everything. And there was uh, one user, you can find uh, the info down here, which is really interesting, it's in English. And there's one user, it's, uh, he's called Alex Tango, and it seems that he's from Madrid. And he opened a thread in this forum and said, uh, and uh, uh, asked people to help to shut down the system. And he wrote in his thread, I want to remind you that D does something that is illegal is not illegal. So, yeah, that's uh, an opinion, right? Um, in this thread, uh, IP addresses from the reverse proxies got published. And also, they updated IP addresses that went down because of the DDoS attacks. So, um, they were really working on this. And uh, there was, uh, as there's evidence that uh, thin flood attacks actually did happen. So, it was not just some computer, uh, computer, some car lovers sitting in front of their computers, pressing F5 and to see if they can uh, if, if they can DDoS uh, the system, but there were actually uh, professional techniques used. Um, it was uh, sin flooding with IP spoofing. So the question is if these were only users from the Foro Coche or if there were uh, law enforcement agencies involved. This is, of course, unknown. So on the reserve proxies, they introduced port knocking to try to mitigate the attack. And... Uh, after some hours, Anonymous Barcelona, I think it was, um, attacked Foro Coches itself, the forum, and uh, so the forum, the website had to go, had to, uh, had to go down into maintenance uh, as a 
for maintenance, so it wasn't uh, accessible anymore. And uh, some other hacker groups attacked, uh, attacked uh, uh, did some other attacks. Uh, these are all described in this really good article. Unfortunately, it's only in Catalan, so sorry for that. Okay, so on the day of the referendum, we had a, we had a whole bunch of attacks. So we had an uh, attack on the net infrastructure, obviously. We had uh, filtering techniques used, and we had a distributed denial of service attack. And um, uh, also, this, uh, all these attacks, voting could, was, uh, the votation was able to take place. And uh, while the central server was, was the weakest point of the system, so I was wondering if it would be possible to build this in a decentralized manner. Right now, these, these days, everybody's talking about blockchain. Maybe there's any possibility to build this with a blockchain. I'm not an expert. So the particip participation of the referendum was 40.3%, which is extremely high, I think, because you have to think that uh, you could see from the early hours in the morning uh, police officers uh, beating up people. So it was a, a real risk to go there and vote, because they could just come by. And well, the yes vote won by 90% or something like this. And there was like 177,000 people that voted no, and 45,913 that voted in Blanco. Is uh, like they, there's a vote like I don't care, which uh, um, which gets actually added to the votes of the most voted party on this case. On the gets added to the votes of the yes to independence. Um, <coughs> in the aftermath on the 10th of October the website of Asamblea Nacional Catalana got shut down again. And I say again because the website got shut down three times. Asamblea Nacional Catalana is a, is a political organization which promotes independence. And um, on the 30th of October, several websites from the Catalan government got shut down. And uh, Asamblea Nacional Catalana, just a few days ago, 19th of December, they took legal action against the blockage of their website because uh, they claim that they never got any information that the websites get, uh, get shut down or blocked and why. So they, they don't even know why. So I come to the conclusion. Uh, I think this could be the biggest internet censorship in the European Union so far. Uh, I think uh, the Euro European Union uh, did not condemn sufficiently what happened these days. Uh, it's, real, it's concerning that the government tried to load the censorship responsibility to the top, top level domain register. And there was a huge repression against the creator of Miros and this unconventional data store from the Where to Vote homepage think is really interesting and it might need a deeper look to understand if this is really secure or not. And I think the most important conclusion of all this is all the repression on the street and the censorship in internet, the Spanish state was not able to stop the referendum. Um, So here are some links about the international re uh, reaction. There are more, but I just put in these four links. Uh, I will upload the slides afterwards so you can check them out. And uh, yeah, thank you a lot. And thank you to all the people that helped me. Some I named here. And uh, there are many more that gave me, con they put me in contact with people or that gave me, explained me the, what they experienced on the day. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, before going to the Q&A, uh, a brief announcement. If you leave through the door marked BW, there's a TV crew behind that making a, a recording. So if you don't want to be filmed, please exit through the door marked BE. Uh, we have about 10 minutes left for Q&A, and the first question uh, shall come from the internet. Yeah. 
You don't have any sound? Okay, then uh, microphone one, please. Hi there, thank you, that was very, very interesting. It seems like you needed a lot of computer expertise to help run all of the polling stations on the day. Were those people volunteers or part of the government? Is that normal that the government is so technically, the Catalan government? Uh, well, uh, on the day of the, uh, I, th I think th what happened in the days before the referendum, there was like a, uh, most of the people in Catalonia were really upset with the Spanish state and uh, were like, uh, this is illegal, I don't care. It was like what everybody felt like about, I don't care if it's illegal or not. So on the day of the, of the referendum, there were like people that had normally would have go to this polling station or they were called because uh, not, so someone knew, hey, you have, you have some computer expertise, come by, help us, uh, the network is not working. So there was no official uh, organization of this by the Catalan government, as far as I, as far as I know, but it was just uh, the people spontaneously helped each other. Okay, microphone two. Hello. Um, I have a question, uh, a question about that. The censorship was quite brutal. So are there any legal actions that are going on against Spain? Because if there is nothing going on against this country, uh, the next time another country will do the same because they have nothing to lose. Well, uh, I don't know of any apart from what I explained from the ANC, from the Asamblea Nacional Catalana, which did some legal action. I think, uh, I mean, for example, European Union hides behind the fact that uh, the Supreme Court of Spain declared the referendum inconstitutional and therefore all the censorship was legal in some way. Okay, next question goes to the internet. So. Uh, why did you use uh, password certification instead of uh, key peering or a certificate? Uh, you mean on the day of the referendum, right? Yeah. yeah. Uh, well, I don't know because I didn't build the system, so I don't know why not, but I think it wasn't used because it was foreseen that the, the reverse proxies will be attacked, and from what I know, you have to you would need a certificate for each IP address or for each domain, and that was not possible because it was like an, we, uh, the, someone put up a new reverse pro proxy, it get attacked, you have to get a new one, and it was, like, it, it was like a cat and mouse all the day long. So that wouldn't be feasible. Okay, microphone two. Uh, thanks for the talk. Um, my question is regarding Telefonica. Did they block based on government requests, one website at a time, or did they block based on the whole referendum is illegal, I see a website based for the referendum, I block it now. So who blocked on what decision? I don't know. To be honest, I don't know, but I suppose that they blocked on, this, on the warrants, on the court orders they got, but I can't tell you for sure. Thanks. Okay, any last question from the internet? Yep. Um, how many people were involved uh, in the war uh, undertaking, if, if you have any idea? I have no idea. It's uh, totally unclear who this was or how many people these were, these uh, activists. Okay. Any other questions? Oh, yeah. It's okay, so it was just a precision to say it, it wasn't a technical part and not uh, every management of people who you, you had for the uh, undertaking, but uh, I think it's, you will say the same answer. Uh, I didn't understand your question. Uh, no, Sorry. the people in internet just wanted to precise their question and say the number of people they want to know is about the technical people. But uh, it's, I think it's the same answer from you. Yeah, well, that's, you mean like the people, in, the people in the polling stations that help each other. I don't know, but I suppose thousands or thousands at least. But I, I can't tell you. I have no idea. Okay, since it seems there are no further questions, uh, I thank you all for keeping your questions brief and to the point. 
uh, when you leave, please take your trash with you and uh, wash your hands.